speaking after the college education gathering after this mess. And so I welcome the occasion to come to celebrate mess with you all this morning. Well, the same thank you very much for the pleasure. We welcome you. Thank you all very much. I feel always very welcome in my country. One thing I'll point out in case anyone has noticed it is saying, why is that there? Uh, I noticed when I walked in here uh, to St. Dominic, uh, well, St. Joseph, and uh, that it is a tradition in the church that when the bishop of the diocese visits a seventh candle, an extra candle, is placed on the wall as a sign of the mission this year. So he's sitting there going, why is that candle there? Because so they're like sweet. Uh, it's, it's an old, old tradition. But anyhow, you know, when we're watching television, watching our program or our game, and all of a sudden it's interrupted and a voice says, breaking news. Well, we know something important. Going on. It's designed to get our attention. And this time of year, it's a warm time of year, charming time of year. We're putting up lights, decorations, having parties, getting ready for Christmas. And we come in here to St. Bobby Church. And instead of lights and decorations, in effect, the church says to us, breaking news, it interrupts this warm and charming season. And instead of hearing readings about angels and majors, who will be presented here? John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is not a warm and charming figure in Scripture. Remember, he makes the scripts of he bears animal skins, he eats insects, he lives out in the wilderness, in the desert. We can only wonder what he looked like, what he smelled like. He is not the one pleasant character in the Bible. And his message is not a warm, charming message. Repent. Make straight the way of the Lord. The church, in fact, says to us, great to do, great to run the name, call the justice for a very important reminder <coughs> that the birth of the one we're about to suffer, this baby that we're about to place in the nature, did not come to us for the week of Battle Festival. But rather came to us to die on the cross because we are sinners. And the church, in fact, says to us, in the midst of all the beauty and all the, the wonder of this season, wait a minute. Let us remember what we are about to solve that a Savior has been sent to us because we are in need of salvation, of forgiveness. And so we are not all just to place the, the statue of the Christ child in the manger, but to place Christ into our very lives and hearts. And for us to look at where in our lives we have not made straight the way of all. That, that's one of the hardest things that we're ever asked to look at ourselves honestly and to see where we are sitting. Where we fit, what are our faults? Because we prefer to make excuses for ourselves and to rationalize our feelings and our sins and so God and sins. The message of John the Baptist is repent. Make straight way. Before we celebrate his birth, to look at where. We are keeping this gift of salvation out of our lives. That first reading from Isaiah says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me twice. And when we get it, let these years of our lives, to let the Spirit of the Lord 
and to create goodness. To make the world look better because we're in it. And for us to look at our lives and say, where is it that I'm doing that and where is it that I'm failing to do that? To look over this past week, how did I treat you? Did I care about anybody else? Did I forgive? Was I generous? Did I make myself present to others? And probably problems with ourselves this past week had good and bad things. We succeeded, we failed. And for us to look to see how can I be a better person than I am. To make straight away the Lord. Now, I'm glad my nephew is not here this morning. He's probably a little bit embarrassed. But when he was a little old, he's grown now his children of his own. But I remember one Christmas morning, I was over at his house, my sister's house near Austin. My other sister, his aunt, was there. We had all bought him Christmas presents. We had talked to a lot of effort. And expense to try to find the, the right thing for I, I can remember being in Walmart trying to find just the right thing they can do the Ninja Turtle figure for her to wrap up and put under the tree for her. There were all the presents under the tree. He came running to the room, he saw the presents, and he started opening his things. And his parents, his aunt, made his uncle. We all watch to see which presents we like. What toy is he going to play with? You know what presents Frank played with? The wrappings, the boxes, the bows. I see that as possible. We have seen Hey, Rita, look at all the effort we had gone to the expense to. Give me that person, and instead he was playing with the weapons. I think sometimes God looks at us and says, Look at the gift I have given to you. My own son. The gift of salvation. One at such a cost. And look at my children. They're playing with the weapons. The decoration. The carols, the pageants, the shopping. And there's nothing wrong with practice. But we can at this time of year get so caught up in the wrappings that we forget the present, the gift. Unto us a child is given. Unto us a son is born, says Scripture. Savior. And it's for us to remember the gift in the midst of all the battles, which are one. The church says to us, we interrupt the season. Remind us of the importance. We make a straight way to look at our own lives and see where we need.